Hello everyone and welcome to Dawn Together uh, Cook Your Own One Pot Meals using the slow cooker. I'm going to be using this slow cooker here. Uh, you may have something that's very similar. So each of the six sessions we'll be doing something, a, a different sort of a dish. This week we're going to actually sort of start off with making a really fabulous vegetable stew. Now, some of the weeks we will be using meat. We will have meat alternatives as well. But I thought this week we'll start off with something really simple that you can just chop everything up together, add some seasoning and pop it in the slow cooker. It's a really simple one to start with, particularly if you're not used to using a slow cooker. This week as well, I'll give you some tips on making the best use of your slow cooker. So it's slightly different to if you're going to be using a pan on the hob or in the oven. It is quite economical um, using electricity. So even though it's on for a long period of time, most of the things that maybe you would cook on the stove for about an hour, you'd do for three or four hours in the uh, slow cooker. So I'm going to give you some tips. And also, throughout the, the six sessions, I'm going to be talking about lots of different things. So most of us are trying to cook on a budget. We want to make our money go further. So we're going to be using lots of different tips and ideas to make your sort of meals sort of spread out a little bit more. Most of the dishes that I'm going to be cooking, you will be able to freeze them. So the, dish, the recipes we've got are going to be for probably four to five people. But if you want, you'll be able to freeze them so you can actually make some meals uh, to just a couple of you or one of you in your family. So I hope you sound, sound exciting. Um, we are going to, uh, as I say, I'm just going to quickly run through a few of the safety points with this slow cooker. Uh, there's only three bits to it. So you've got a lid. This is the inside bit that you actually cook in. And then this is the heating element. The heating element's at the bottom. So this is the bit that when you've finished, you just wipe down with a damp cloth. Yeah. This uh, pan is kind of, it's a non-stick one. So just be careful that you use uh, wooden utensils or plastic spoons in it. So that's what we cook the food in and then it's got a glass lid. Now one of the things about cooking with a slow cooker is if you take the lid off um, and let the, let the heat out it does take longer to cook so you can see the food cooking through the lid but the best thing to do is once you've put the slow cooker on is to leave it as it is and another safety point with these is they have got obviously got a flex on them and will need to be plugged in so make sure that the this flex this wire isn't sort of over the heat so if you keep it away from your hob and also if you have got um, a socket you can put it in so it's well back um, on the on the worktop as well so that's just a little bit. Don't forget, if you have got um, a slow cooker and use it for the first time, just have a quick read through this booklet. I mean, it does say this appliance can be used by children aged from eight years. So obviously they've got to be supervised because the, whatever gets in, in here gets really, really hot. So what you need to do is, might be an idea that if you want to do some cooking with your children, you can get them peeling and chopping and you can make a meal together. You have got to be careful. Um, it says on here before you use it, obviously remove all the packaging and uh, wash out the, the inside pan, the soapy wall, so rinse it. And then it does say in here, make sure it's on a flat surface and pour four cups of water into the cooking pot and cover with the lid. Turn it to high for 30 minutes. That just makes sure that it's all nice and clean, ready for you to use. There is some other instructions in here about cooking um, different dishes. Now, as we go on throughout the weeks, uh, I will be sort of covering things like how you can adapt the recipes. So it might be that you've got a favorite recipe you cook 
he could come and stay over at the moment. So I'll be able to give you some idea of if it takes two hours on there, how long it's taking your slow cooker. But one of the main things about slow cookers is, because the lid's on, all the steam evaporates across it, all goes back into it. So you've got to be really careful that you don't use lots of liquid in it. You think, oh, there doesn't much, there isn't much liquid in that, but it will be okay. So that's just another little thing. Um, I think that's about all it. Yeah, a little bit about cleaning in here and the maintenance of your slow cooker. And also keep that nearby. I don't know about you, but I've got a drawer, you know, one of those drawers with loads of stuff in it. And if you pop that in there and then you can just have a quick look at it when you need to. So that's our slow cooker. Now it's a 3.5 litre one. And there is the other one thing I should really tell you is on the side of it, there's a, a, a line for maximum. So don't fill it any more than that. Because one of the things that it needs is space for the heat to move around in it. But it's still, it's still you can get quite a lot in. It'll be enough to feed six people in here. So I'm just going to pop this on the side now. Now I've got mine stood, obviously, on, just so you can see it here. But if you're putting it on the worktop, it's better to sort of stand it on something. So if you've got a wooden board or some place mats or cork mats or something like that. Because it does get quite hot underneath. So that's it's about that. Now, what I have made here is, I've already tested all these recipes. And in here I have got what we're going to be making today. Now I've had to move it out of my slow cooker and this is the vegetable stew that we're going to make today. With all these recipes, as I said, you can chop and change things to suit you and you might make it once and think, oh, I'd like a different flavour. So at the end of the, the session when I've shown you how to prepare all the food to go in the slow cooker, I'll give you some other ideas of things that you can add to it to make it slightly different. So it's got the beans in and it's got a tomato sauce. So this is how much this recipe makes. And I'll tell you a little bit about what you can serve it with as well. So I'll just move this out of the way. I'll put it under here. So out of the way and my booklet. And I've got my recipe here. Oh, before I do that, I've just remembered, I don't know if you've used different mats. I've got this pack of four mats here. So there's a blue, yellow, red, and a green. Now, I don't know if you've seen, but behind me, I put up this cross-contamination. So this is a little bit about food hygiene, really, and I know you'll know this already. But the red one, we're going to use, or I'm going to use just for raw meat. And uh, once you've used it with raw meat, and you need to give it a really good clean. But if you keep that one just for raw meat, there's a blue one as well. And I've got on this one raw fish. So you can prepare your raw fish on that one. The other two, the yellow one, I've put labels on as well, just to remind me. Uh, cooked meats and sandwiches. And this green one uh, really is for salads and fruits. But we're going to use it for vegetables as well. So really it's more for raw things that we're going to cook. So I'll put those others out of the way because I will need the green one today. We're not cooking meat so we won't need that one. And I'll just pop those out down there. So what do we need? I've got my tray ready. So when you're cooking it's best if you get all your ingredients out together. I find then you're not having to run around quite so much. There does look a lot of things here. But we are going to make quite a lot of stew. So you will need some chopped tomatoes. Now I've got the ones with herbs in. You don't have to. You just have ordinary ones. I've got butter beans. Now you can use any sort of beans. You might have some cannelloni, cannellini beans that you might want to use. I have also got a tin of chickpeas. 
and those are all the tin things. So then I've got some lentils. Now these are the orange lentils, the dry ones, and they're really good for adding to stews and things, particularly if you're cooking in a slow cooker, because they help to thicken it. And also it's a little bit of protein. So those are the orange ones. They don't need cooking beforehand, you can just pop them in at the same time. I'm going to move those out of the way because they do need washing, so I have washed some. I'm going to put half a cup in, or half of one of these mugs. I've also got, you'll see I've got one and a half of these, butternut squash. I'm just going to use this half of it, because we need, I've got to have a look how much we need. On the recipe, I think it said, yeah, 400 grams. You can put extra in if you've got it. Um, so we, we need that, we're going to peel that. Now, I've got a pepper. I've only got, there were a big pepper, so I've just got half a pepper. I'm going to pop some carrots in. I think I'll just put one carrot in. And I'm going to put some, oh, no, I lost that. And some courgette. Now, you don't have to put the courgette in if you don't want. I've also got an onion. It's just a brown onion. A red onion, it doesn't matter. I'd say that's kind of a medium-sized onion. I'm going to put some garlic in as well. So I just want one of those. Is it quite a big one? I'm just going to put one of those in. Put that out of the way. Oops. I've got some tomato puree. Now this is concentrated. And actually, it does count some of your five a day as well, so it's quite good. as extra way of... Um, for children to get some more of their five a day. I've got some all-purpose seasoning, and I got this, I think, from, this one's from Aldi, but you can buy them at most of the supermarkets. I've got some extra mixed herbs, and I'm going to put a vegetable stock cube in as well. It just gives it a little bit of extra flavour. And pepper. Now, I'm not adding any extra salt, because quite a lot of salt in the seasoning and the stock cubes but once it's divided out by how many people then it is less so I'm going to prepare the vegetables first so I'll move those out of the way now I have washed my hands and because I'm in my kitchen my sink is there so I'm going to wipe my hands again I've just got to find the cloth I'm going to wipe my hands again. Obviously, you'd wash your hands. So I'm going to prepare these. Now, I'm going to move that butternut squash out of the way because I don't need that one for this. I've also got some cheese because it's quite nice to serve at the end with some grated cheese on the top. It's not essential, but it does give it a quite a nice flavour. And the other things that I've got to serve it with is some crusty bread which has gone a little bit soft. So if you put in the oven on for something else, you can just crisp that up in the oven. Or you could serve it with some tortilla wraps either. And actually, uh, the children quite like that. So put the veg down the middle and fold it all up with some cheese in, and that's really nice. So I'll put those to one side. I am gonna put the cheese back in the fridge, because I don't want to leave it out. that out of the way. Now, I usually have a bowl that I put all the uh, peel and things on. But I'm just going to use this today. And I'm going to take these. I'm going to put this straight in the pan. I'm going to cut it. So I need a knife. I will make sure we, we don't need lots of equipment to do this course. Um, I don't have lots of equipment at home, so I'll show you ways of making it easier. Just using the equipment that you've got. So start with the pepper. I'm going to cut it in half, and I usually just cut it into quarters, and then just chop that little bit off. Then you're not wasting it. You can take the, the rest of it, the seeds out. Come on there. And do this one. 
Again, it doesn't matter if you haven't got any pepper. Adds a little different flavour. But what you could do is you could add red or green ones. I think the green ones are best cooked. So sometimes if, if you get them in a pack of three, the green ones are good for cooking. And the other ones are sweeter, the red ones and the yellow ones. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. Down. Make sure you keep your fingers back. I'm going to just chop like that. Oh, now I've popped in the wrong place then. It is easier when you've got a larger chopping board like this. You just chop them in half. You might actually take a little bit more time than I'm doing. I just want to show you. preparation we've got the onion so we're going to leave the the root on we're going to cut the take the top off make sure your fingers are out of the way i'm just going to peel the rest off now i don't know about you but i like to do onions quite quickly and you don't end up with tears the rest of the skin off there. And so you can use uh, red onions if you want, whichever ones you've got in. You could actually use leeks if you had some leeks. I'm use a slightly bigger knife for this. I'm just going to chop it down the middle. all the bits are out. I find that if you've got somewhere to put all your bits, you know, your peelings and things, it helps because then you, um, you've you got, you're not mixing it all together with the onion and thing that's going to go into the uh, the pan. So again, make a bit of a bridge and I'm just going to chop down. Don't cut right to the end, and then I'm just going to do it once here to show you there, as far back as you can. And then holding the onion, just chop down. Now you can leave this as chunky as you like. I've cut it fairly fine, and then just chop the rest of the onion, and then you've got wasted on it. So the same with the other, like a bridge, down, making sure you don't go right to the back, to the root, and then, now when you get a little bit practiced at this, you can do that two or three times, you get really nice and fine. about these mats is slide that in like that you know get it all over the floor and take one clove of garlic and just chop the ends off now you could use a garlic press if you've got one if not you could grate it or you could just finely chop it I'm just going to Slice this really finely. Well, fairly finely anyway. I quite like garlic in vegetables. And it's quite nice. If, you were, if you're roasting vegetables, it's nice to put some garlic in with it as well. Those are fairly chunky bits, but they'll be fine. So we're going to cook together. So I've got those in now. So the other thing about just be careful if you're doing that down the knife, you don't cook it yourself. So I've got half the butternut squash here. Now it's got quite a tough skin on it, but I find it's easiest if you chop the ends off and then cut it in the middle. So I've lost it here. So, so chop the ends off and then cut down the middle. So this is half of them here. 
because these were quite large ones, the only ones they had at uh, the shop when I went yesterday. And at the moment, because it's quite difficult going out shopping, isn't it? And not everybody can get out to shop. And they're asking us not to go out, just to go out for essential things. I thought, well, I'll just go to one shop. And I got most of the things that I needed. Um, apart from, yes, yeah, so I was going to use some cannellini beans, but I could only get the, uh, the butter beans. So I'm going to use those. Now, you can either chop down skin like that. Or if you've got a peeler, you can peel it like this. If you're not, if you're not a very confident peeler, do it like this. Until you've got all the peel off. Now they do have seeds in the middle. So we will have to remove those. The other thing about this is the, uh, yeah, the seeds in the middle. But if you're only using half of it, you can use the other half um, in something else. So you might want to make some roast vegetables. So what you could do is chop it into chunks with some onion. If you've got some mushrooms. Uh, another pepper maybe just place it on a large um, baking sheet on a large baking sheet with a little bit of oil just some ordinary oil some sunflower oil or vegetable oil just brush it on don't pour it on because you don't want it to be greasy put some garlic with it you could put some mixed herbs on it and just bake it in the oven for half an hour to about 180. So halfway through, you just open, check with your oven and just give it a stir round, just to make sure it's not burning. But it is easier, rather than trying to peel the whole thing, if you do it, just half at a time, nearly there. There we go. I'm going to get rid of this peel onto here. As I say, you could use a bit of newspaper. It was a bit wasteful using some kitchen roll, but it was a thing I had handy. As I say, usually I've got colander or something that I put all the bits in. Then you put them straight into the bin, or if you put them on the compost heap. You're doing any growing this year, and if anybody does any growing, so down, then inside you can see all the seeds. So you can take those out, just be careful that you need quite a strong knife to do this. Now, you can take the seeds out, pull the seeds out, or you can get a spoon. And a spoon. Got a spoon here. Get rid of those. Could even try planting some of these. I'm not thinking, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't tried growing a butternut squash. Done. If you use a spoon, it means you don't cut any of the rest of it all out. Don't like to waste any. There we are. Now I'm going to chop these up. Now it's up to you. It's, sorry. I'm the size you want to do this. I'm going to chop them up about this sort of size. A bit bigger than a dice, I think. Pop those in. Now I would normally wash these before I put them in. But again, I can do that. You can do that if you want. 
We have peeled it, so it should be okay. there. More stringy bits off. If you cut all the pieces at similar sort of size, then they all cook at the same time. This is a tough bit. So you could leave them bigger, but it'll just take a little bit longer to cook. They just smell nice. If you don't want to use, um, if you can't get any butternut squash, you could use some sweet potato if you wanted instead. It's filling up nicely, it's the pan now. So this is the bit that takes the longest, the chopping. I'm not sure how long it's taken, probably about five minutes. But you can watch this video and then do your own cooking or you could cook along with me. So as I said, following weeks we will be doing Lots of different recipes. That. Get everywhere of these things. If you find it difficult chopping, you can actually buy it already chopped for you. And I'm not sure, I don't know if I've seen it, if you can buy butternut squash frozen. This is the cheapest way to buy it because you're taking your time to cook it, you cut it all yourself. Right, I've also got a courgette. I'm just going to prepare half of this for now. Again, I've washed it, chopped the ends off, and I'm just going to chop down. And I'm going to put it into three pieces, and then so we've got little chunks like that. Goes in. Those bits, and then I have a carrot. So I'm just going to peel the carrot and chop this into small chunks because it's it's quite hard. A carrot you need to cut these a little bit smaller. So I'm going to again cut them like I've done with the courgette. Chop the end off, a bit green. There we are. I'm going to cut it into three. Oops. Cut down. The more vegetables you add, the different flavours you get. If you've got some celery, you could add some celery either, that's nice, isn't it? Now, I haven't tried making this. I don't know if anybody's seen it. Freezer shop, you can get a bag of frozen um, casserole vegetables. They might be something that you could try either. So that's the carrot done. So that's all the chopping done now. That's going to go in. Pop that on there. I'm going to pop that in the bin out of the way. Now, 
as I said, if you've got a, uh, you can put that on the uh, compost heap. So we've now got all our vegetables in there. It's about half full now. We're going to add half a cup of the, when I say a cup, it's not an American cup, it's one of my beakers. So if you're not, again, it could be a couple of handfuls. I have washed this, washed these, and they've also gone a little bit hard now. So I'm gonna pop those in. You just wash them uh, under the cold water, tap in a colander if you've got it. Because I prepared this a little bit earlier before I started. I'm a bit starchy there. Now what else do we need? We need to add chopped tomatoes. As I say, these ones have got herbs in them. Just be careful with the lid bit. Rinse those out and put those in the bin. Butter beans. Now you need to drain these ones. So I'm going to see if I've got a... Uh, let me see what I've got to drain these into. I know I can drain these into my cup. Put the lid down a little bit. Now if you want, you can rinse these under the tap as well, in the colander, I'm losing a few. So the butter beans are going in. And we've got chickpeas as well. I need to drain these. So that just fits in. That was good. So you don't need to use a lot of equipment for this. And we need some tomato puree. And now the recipe says, I think it's three tablespoons. Now I've only got a dessert spoon here, so I'm going to do three heaped ones of these. That's one. Some jiggle. This is trouble if you don't do it from the end. Now once you've opened these, you need to keep it in the fridge. So if you've got one of these for this time, you can keep it for the next recipe. I think next week we might, or next time I meet you, we might be doing the, like a bolognese. So you'll need some tomato puree for that. So the easiest way to open it is it's got like a little pointed bit on there. Just break the seal on it with that. And then just pop it back in the fridge. Make sure you've wiped the top. And then it keeps it from go, you know, going a bit bunny. I'm going to put a vegetable stock cube in. Now what you can do with this is if you want to just dissolve it before you pop it in. In a little bit of hot water you can do some hot water out of the kettle. I'm just going to chop it up really finely. Because as I said, I'm uh, not near my sink at the moment. So chop that up. Oops. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a good mix, so that'll be fine. Now I've got some mixed herbs. I'm gonna I'm gonna put probably about the tip of a teaspoon in. So about that, about half a teaspoon. Because there was some in my tomato. And then I'm going to put some all purpose seasoning in. It does say sprinkle of vegetables, add flavour to casserole. And we want to add a little bit of flavour to this. So I'm just going to put a teaspoon in. Remember, it's got salt in this, so we don't want to put too much in. 
trying to, if we're trying to reduce our salt, but pop a little bit of pepper in it as well. Now the thing about cooking in the slow cooker, what happens is you put too much seasoning in, it goes really, you get really intense flavour. So, although you want some flavour, you don't want to put too much in to start with. You can always add a little bit right at the end. So I'm going to give that a good mix. As I said, it doesn't seem much liquid in there at all. <laughs> but make sure you've got it mixed really well. Should really be using a wooden spoon, shouldn't I? Just gonna do it properly if I use a wooden spoon. So I've mixed all that in together best I can. And it's gonna go into the slow cooker. For you here, I've got I've got this stood here on my uh, I've got it on a glass um, you know board. Pop that in, pop the lid on, and I'm going to cook it on low for about four to five hours. I'm going to check it after four hours. So that's it. What you can do, as I said, you could serve it with some nice crusty bread. Or you could maybe serve it with some rice, or you could boil some pasta and stir it into some pasta. Now, the other things that I thought you might like to do, let's see, I've got a few things under here. You could use, these are other things that you could use in there. I have got a stew pack. You know the ones you can get, they're usually anything from like 75p to a pound. So they're really good for using either in it. And it's got a swede in, so you could use the swede instead of the butternut squash if you wanted. I've got a sweet potato. You could use that instead of the butternut squash. And I've got another carrot there. It looks a bit past its best, but it would be absolutely fine chopped up. Now, it, oh, beans. This is a tin of mixed beans. So it's got, let me see what beans it's got in it. It should tell me somewhere. Let me have a look. Ingredients, haricot beans, cavallini beans, red beans. So it's got a variety, but it's in water. So make sure if you buy it, you get one that's actually in water. Because you can get them in like a vinaigrette that you, you might serve with a, a salad. So you, you want to drain the water off that if you're using those. Now, flavour-wise, I did wonder if you could try one of these. Now, these I got from, there's two pots in here. And it's a tikka masala paste pot. Now, if you didn't want to put the other seasoning in that I did, you could maybe use one of these. Uh, you can get them in a jar, but I bought these from, now I don't know if it was like B&M or Home Bargains, you know, one of those sort of, shops where you get quite random things and I think they were I don't know if they were less than, they were less than a pound but there's two there so you'd, you'd stir that in with your tomatoes right at the beginning so if you wanted like a veg curry and it would be really nice instead of using the sweet potato or the butternut squash if you put in um, cauliflower that's really nice particularly with the chickpeas and the beans so those are those things and I was going to just give you a few more tips. I've got my list here and I'll put this up so that you can see. One of the real benefits of using a slow cooker is it can cut down your prepping time because you're going to cook most of the things all together in one dish. So it's just about the preparation and it's really handy if you've got, I don't know, if, if, it's, if you've got children and they're at nursery and you think, right, I've got a couple of hours now, I can do my tea, prep it, and then I can pop it on, even if pop it on later in the afternoon. So it's ready for tea time, so you can do that. The other thing is, if you have to be up early and out, well, see, you see, that's one of the other things you've got to remember. I've done that before. Forget to turn the electric on, so you've, you've put it all in, and you've forgotten to put it on. 
so I've forgotten to put it on. So it's there, yeah, it's done. So you could actually prepare it the night before, but what, what you have to do is you prepare it like I did, pop it in the, the internal bowl, but put that bowl in your fridge. Don't leave it on the side. It has to be kept cool till it starts cooking. So you, don't, you could do that. The other thing, cheap meat. So we're going to do, we're maybe going to do a chicken casserole. But instead of buying um, chicken breast, we'll use some chicken thighs or something like that. Because they cook better. So it could it cook them slowly. Sometimes if you use sort of like the best cuts of chicken, it ends up tasting a bit, well, it goes a bit rubbery. So we won't be, so one of the things is you can use cheaper meats. Also, because it doesn't brown your food, one of the things really is to make sure that you trim any fat off the meat because it just ends up just like white and it's not nice at all. Um, so you have to take, you know, take the skin off it. So if you, if you were doing chicken, you'd have to take the chicken skin off it, else it just, it's, well, it's horrible. You won't like it. Uh, reduce the liquid when using a slow cooker. Yes, always. If you find that it's still very wet, at the end and you've got too much you can actually take the lid off and cook it for on high you know for about 15 minutes and some of that will come off or i'll show you another week you can mix some corn flour uh, with a little bit of water and then we can uh, make a paste add that to it and it will thicken it and the other things we've got is great for using um sort of kind of you know the bargains and things that you can get you know the things in the shops that you think oh yes often there's you know like some when you see some meat or something you think oh it's reduced a lot yeah I like a yellow sticker so it's good for cooking things like you know things like that um so just a few things there about some top tips there for using the the slow cooker so once it starts to heat up what will happen is the top you'll see it's heating up because there'll be the, the, you know the condensation on the top but as i say you need to leave it now make sure the lid's on well and leave it for four hours as i say it won't matter if you leave it for five but you can check it so that's our first session done i hope you're going to enjoy making that uh, I've lost one. Oh, I put my dish under here. I'll just show you again what, what you end up with. So here is our vegetable stew. And the other thing that I've just found is the chilies. Because that's another thing. If you wanted to make a vegetable chilli, you could use a couple of teaspoons of chilli flakes in right at the beginning as well. So if you've enjoyed it, these videos will be on YouTube, so you can watch them again if you've missed out a little bit. If you want to put any comments on for me about, you know, if you've enjoyed making it or if you've got some photographs, you could pop those on as well, because we'd love to hear from you. And hopefully you'll be able to try this, enjoy it, and I will see you again for our next video. So bye for now and take care.